So what has been the most challenging DNF kind of learning for you and why did it happen? And what did you learn from so, the DNF experience? Uh, I think uh, the recent race for me was in Malaysia and that's where uh, I have uh, uh, had a terrible experience. I won't say I was, I was, um, I was not at my worst pressure on me. I wanted uh, to finish a four hour, 30 minutes to five hour because that was a bad day. I mean, the heat was too, too high yeah. that uh, many people had uh, um, actually uh, the second rank was five hours. Hello listeners, welcome back to another amazing episode of Trifantry Chronicles. I'm your host, Coach Nishan Bhardwaj. I'm an Ironman coach and a marathon coach. Today we have a very interesting guest. Uh, his name is Raghul. He's a coach to coaches. He's in fact my coach from many, many years. Last two years I've been coaching under him. Uh, all thanks to him, I've been able to work on my personal goals more than ever. See, what happens is when you are working alone, I might be a coach, but when I'm coaching myself, it's very difficult to actually assess if you're going in the right direction. There has to be a sounding board that helps you to keep aligning to the overall goal. You're rightly estimating yourself and someone else is there to work with you. So today's uh, session is going to be very important for uh, upcoming triathletes, uh, Raghul has been coaching for the last seven years. He has coached over 500 individuals to uh, train for their triathlon and marathon goals. So without further ado, let's welcome our today's guest, Raghul, all the way from Chennai, India. Welcome, Raghul. Thank you for taking out your time. I know you are crazy about training and punctuality. So thank you for taking out your time. I'm looking forward to the conversation. I was just telling the audience that you are a coach to coaches. You have helped more than 500 people cross the finish line. Uh, what motivated you to get into full time into coaching and helping people out? Okay, uh, so I, I think main motivation for me is uh, the passion towards triathlon. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I like the sport very much, and. Um, when when I started, uh, I saw triathlon as a swim cycle run. Mm. But I have seen many people, uh, uh, you know, rather uh, swimming, cycling, running. I have seen many people uh, swimming, cycling, walking, and that was that was a major difference. Why I I wanted to coach people. I wanted to make sure that this is uh, triathlon where it is not swimming, cycling, and walking. I think that was one of the major reasons why I wanted to be, uh, uh, you know, why I wanted to do this right. Uh, uh, the the triathlon uh, coaching where I started was, uh, I would decide the distance for my athletes rather than them uh, choosing that distance because this is where people go wrong. Yeah. Uh, the word Ironman is a very uh, enticing word mm. and uh, people try to... Uh, uh, you know, choose Ironman just because of its word, not because they are ready for it. Yeah. Uh, it it's not a. It's not just uh, three different uh, things coming together. It's it's mm -hmm. actually a lot different. Uh, a, a, a marathon is difficult. People, I've seen a lot of people walking in a marathon. I've seen a lot of people walking in a half marathon. So mm -hmm. when they are not ready for it, uh, I know when they are ready for it or not ready for it. So I. I train people. When I train people, I really uh, make sure they are ready for a distance. Mm -hmm. uh, if they are, if I I decide that they are ready for it and I allow them to register, then I make sure they are ready for it on the race day. Mm -hmm. And also, I set uh, targets. When yeah. I when I give a, a proper uh, when I give a target for a person for my athlete or a triathlete, I am hundred percent confident that they will reach. Uh, their target uh, mm -hmm. and finish their race on the target, and there won't, there won't, there would rarely be any uh, difficulties uh, except for you know mechanicals or those things are uh, mm -hmm. unfortunate. You cannot do anything about it. But apart uh, from any other technical difficulties, uh, mm -hmm. I think 
majority of my athletes have always finished on the target time that I give them because I know uh, are, uh, according to the training uh, based on their uh, progress mm. according to the plans that I give them if they do it uh, in a in a certain way or even mm. if they don't uh, do it in a, in the exact way that I plan it still I would know what target they would achieve so that's right so it's it's something that I have learned over a period of time. Uh, this is one of the main motivations for my coaching people. Uh, also, I I get really happy uh, when uh, when I see my athlete performing uh, rather than my own performance. It's more happiness for me when I I, I realized that uh, in uh, in 2018 when I saw my athletes crossing uh, uh, Colombo 70.3 finish line, it mm-hmm. was really happy for me. I was I was not really happy that I did five hours. Uh, I was very happy when my athlete crossed 823. He was 52 years old. So, wow. yeah, I think 52 years old at that time. So, he crossed 823 uh, and that was uh, an amazing feeling. I, I was really happy for more than more than my own five-hour timing. So, so every day it's very interesting uh, when I talk with them, my athletes. You, you see injuries, uh, different types of injuries in different people and then different types of commitments uh, they they miss training and then you, you it's very close to the race and then you change their plans accordingly and then mm. you change their uh, uh, entire uh, routine and everything changes so it's very interesting for me i like it and also the bike fit part what motivates me for bike fitting uh, is also uh, i like to improve performance so in mm. general it's it's all based on performance for me so mm. when i saw that uh, people ride uh, bicycles uh, uh, you know, it's it's very strange when you don't have a bike fitted. There are yeah. people who ride 100, try to ride 100 kilometer, come end up with a lot of different different uh, pains. And then there are uh, people who ride just uh, uh, on their quadriceps. So there are people who ride a lot uh, a lot with their back paining. And then yeah. there are different types of uh, pains. So I started addressing uh, them, and then I started finding out what is going wrong. And then uh, I never had any bike fit course uh, study uh, hmm. what i uh, what i'm doing is majority uh, based on my uh, experience from uh, um, seeing people and uh, coaching people and also hmm. my own uh, experience in different countries and different races so i think uh, i've been uh, I, i've given five uh, more than 500 bike fits also now uh, uh, but uh, uh, i've never had any uh, uh, issues uh, in uh, understanding uh, the difficulty that they are facing uh, because it's ca- kind of natural for me uh, i've been cycling for more than 11 years now so uh, so yeah that these are the two two things that i do bike fitting okay, and coaching. You. yeah i think uh, oh, one of the most beautiful things you just said about coaching is that uh, you know it's when you see someone that you've trained cross the finish line as a teacher i think that's the kind of best feeling that you can ever have right uh, yeah. I have also done same races where I have crossed the finish line, and but I've seen my students crossing it. That feeling that it, it almost feels like your child is kind of uh, coming to a, a fruition of the entire training process of six months, 12 months, 18 months. There are people who yeah. have trained for two to years also. So that yeah. it is beautiful. That feeling is uh, something that you cannot express. That uh, yeah. feeling of being a teacher. So that brings me to the next uh, question. When bef- while doing research for this uh, episode, I had also asked on my stories, uh, yeah. uh, what co- question would they like to hear from you? And one question which uh, you know some of my runner uh, followers asked me was, we've been running for four years, five years, half marathons, and maybe one marathon here and there. Yeah. How do they know that they are ready to graduate to a seventy point three? Uh, and they also asked that I don't know swimming. Can I do a Ironman? So I think I just wanted to ask you this: having such plethora of uh, different kinds of people that you've trained, how this do they know? This is some question. This is some question I would be very happy to answer because yeah. uh, even yesterday I had uh, one phone call from a Calcutta uh, from a person uh, in Calcutta. So uh, he's he's a runner. He's not mm. a triathlete, but he wants to do triathlons. Now, uh, uh, the thing is, um, uh, how do I decide whether I go one distance above this? Mm. That is the first question I'm going to answer. Uh, the first question, uh, the, the, okay, that. Uh, the first uh, uh, thing is, uh, I, 
i decide uh, whether you are ready for a distance mainly based on the speed that you do the current distance that you're doing okay okay so for running i yeah. i decide whether you are a, 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 if you want to go for a half marathon from a 10 km then mm. i keep a benchmark of 54 minutes 10 km Mm. if you're ready to do a if you're ready to finish 54 minutes 10 km and if you finish it in the time mm. uh, i think you're ready for a half marathon mm. and that is my that is my uh, uh, condition for my coaching so in my uh, coaching uh, people cross 54 and then they go for the half marathon it's not directly the half marathon mm. and if you finish 1 hour 49 minutes on the half marathon then i allow a uh, uh, full marathon for them okay okay so this these two numbers that i have come up is based on uh, uh, so many years of experience uh, and if you cross 54 minutes 10 km you are you are going to get a guaranteed 2 hour half marathon hmm. uh, but according to uh, uh, it's not going to be like immediately after the 54 minutes 10 km okay. but you will need a training according to the half marathon mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. then uh, if you get a 149 half marathon you are mm-hmm. definitely going to get a full marathon in 4 hours Mm. so this is uh based on a few years of uh, running experience that i've i've learned this and uh, also i have uh, proved this from with all my runners mm. i mean i have had runners who who started with 5 and a half hours uh, there was a runner who who had uh, run 5 and a half hours thrice mm. on the full marathon uh, he joined my coaching asking if he, he, if i can help him with a full marathon i said no it's only 10 km initially so mm. he he did few 10 kilometers uh, and it took him uh, six months of proper training and he finished 53 minutes on the first 10 km so mm. i told him it was allowed uh, it was uh, okay for him to graduate to the half marathon distance mm. and then uh, it took him two or three uh, races mm. uh, on the half marathon he finished 149 on the second or third race mm. uh, 147 or 149 and then he went on to do his uh, full marathon in 353 uh, it was all mm. not in in a few months time it it mm. took two years of training uh, mm. to reach that 353 but he was actually 532 or 542 the the best full marathon timing wow. so the 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 reason why i'm saying this is it's it's easy to increase the distance and then end up walking through <laughs> the uh, through the uh, running race you know no one's going to stop you from walking but it is not uh, what i would like to see mm. and uh, and the same goes for a half marathon half ironman mm. if, if you're ready for a half ironman then then you should be at least under uh, uh, yeah, i think around 3 uh, and a half hours of olympic triathlon would be a good uh, a, a good uh, benchmark for mm. Uh, mm. half ironman registration and then um, at least uh, you know at least 7:30 mm. on the half a half iron man to go for mm. a full iron man uh, you know if at all you want to finish it in the given cut off time mm. this is just for the sake of cut off time i'm talking about yeah. but if you want to do it well like you want to run the half marathon in the half iron man or run mm. the full marathon in the full iron man then then the timing targets are different yeah. it's not just that i'm going to uh, uh, it's not just 7:30 on the half iron man yeah. for the full iron man so those timing targets are different so this yeah. is one way of uh assessing how you can progress your, yeah this is like one way of going uh graduating from one distance to another but mm-hmm. then you asked me also another question where whether i should go for ironman uh, whether when can i choose ironman so swimming is uh, is a very huge challenge in india mm. uh, many many people in india don't know swimming it's not uh, it, it's not something compulsory in our school and That's even uh, when when we were uh, children i think uh, uh, rarely any parents were encouraged us to you know go to the sea and then you take them to the beach and then they say the first thing they say is don't go to the water don't go. Yeah, yeah i don't go to the water yeah don't go it's dangerous Just main yeah. main reason beyond, behind this um saying is they don't know something yeah so if something happens to you as a child then the parents are not ready to uh, help yeah. because they're also non swimmers so this is this is some fear that was passed on through generations i think yeah that's true that's true uh, yeah so in, in and then i learned swimming at the age of uh, 10 and then i was not a good swimmer anyway uh, because that that was just a learning beginner mm. swimming so i i started uh, 
training properly from 2012 so from then on i learned that it is not the depth that matters if you know swimming the depth doesn't matter doesn't so matter. Yeah. so uh, i uh, uh, and then uh, when you ask me when should i start a triathlon as a non swimmer then i see uh, uh, that you should definitely enroll for basic coaching and then basic learning mm-hmm. swimming and then uh, go for some special class mm-hmm. uh, where uh, you get a stroke corrected mm-hmm. uh, and i will see some videos of your swimming i will i will know when for you to register i mean uh, yeah. uh, last uh, uh, month uh, that is may i took some seven others uh, to malaysia 70.3 where yeah. uh, three of them were totally beginning beginners on swimming they had not learned swimming uh, in the uh, in their childhood or uh, it was not later uh, not uh, earlier than 6 months mm-hmm. so 6 months uh, before is when they learned swimming Hmm. and they had absolutely no understanding of sea water but uh, i took them i then i then took them on a sea swim um, hmm. uh, class kind of thing and then uh, introduced them to the sea waters and then uh, the technique uh, behind the sea swimming and everything hmm. so so i i kind of understand where you stand from your hmm. from your pool swimming uh from your video uh, even if you are just sending a video i don't have to be on the in person correct uh, from videos and also i understand from the pace that you are swimming in the pool whether you will uh, yeah. uh make the cut of 1 hour 10 minutes in the half ironman or the 2 hour 20 minutes full ironman so so as a uh, as a coach i have i've been training several people and this is what mm. i've understood over the years so yeah, yeah. i think a uh, very valid point uh, it's important to understand that the entire process is not about quickly graduating and you know because you know the entire society is moving to everything fast easy and cheap we want everything now like everything you want food you want to order and you want it now yeah. you want a girlfriend yeah. you want you go on a app you want it now you want yeah. a promotion you want to work for 3 months and then you want a promotion or an increment society is moving towards you know that fast easy yeah, cheap fast so we think that 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 value of building it slowly graduating it slowly anything i keep saying this on so many platforms that anything worth building will has to be built slowly it could be yeah. finances it could be health it could be relationships it could be anything yeah. right you have yeah. to put in the work you have to go through the journey and in the journey you'll realize that it's the journey which was actually more fruitful than the racing or that one day of crossing the finish line right that obviously is a culmination but it's the process which you start enjoying and i really appreciate you that you've been doing it for many many years that brings me to the next question uh, which is see we have all talked about uh, your experiences and experiences of helping 550 or 600 more people yet it even experienced people such as yourself a little bit learned that i'm learning people like us can also dnf and yeah. did not finish or did not start or whatever reasons there could be many you could have n number of reasons that you did not finish despite the yeah. experience so what has been the most challenging dnf kind of learning for you and why did it happen and what did you learn from the dnf experience um uh, i think uh, the recent race for me was in malaysia and that's where uh, i have uh, uh, had a terrible experience i won't say i was i was um i was not at my worst uh, i have i've seen worse uh, conditions and still finished the race i have uh, had a better days and then this malaysia race what happened mainly was i had a huge mental pressure on myself i i think that was main reason for me to uh, mm. Uh, not do well so the the main reason what ha- uh, uh, behind uh, this entire race was mm-hmm. i i put an extra pressure on me i wanted uh, to finish a 4 hour 30 minutes to 5 hour because that was a bad day i mean the heat was too too high yeah. that uh, many people had uh, um, actually uh, the second rank was 5 hours oh, wow uh, yeah 5 hours and 2 minutes was the second rank uh, it was uh, it was bad hot yeah it was not a good day uh, and uh, for me i wouldn't uh, uh, care about the timing but what i found out was through the cycling after the swim swim was also not so easy because the water was quite choppy okay. but anyway mm. that is that is something not to complain about mm. uh, it, it is the same condition for everyone 
uh, mm. and the weather is also the same for everyone so i don't complain about the weather but what happened to me was i was not um, riding at my usual wattage mm. so i was targeting uh, somewhere around 190 watt uh, to 200 watt mm. but then i was on 140 watt which is my warm up watt and uh, the heart rate was around 160 beats per minute which is my threshold so something oh, wow. was going wrong yeah something was going wrong i i understood that uh, some uh, uh, i mean my heart was not uh, enjoying the day um so i i thought maybe the heart rate reading is wrong but then mm-hmm. my feeling was not so good also it was like mm-hmm. uh, my effort was too high and mm-hmm. still the uh, wattage was 140 to 160 mm-hmm. uh, which was too low which mm-hmm. is like warm up uh, wattage for me and then uh i i just thought okay let me continue for a 45 km and see what happens after 50 km i started cramping and that's when i realized that the heart rate reading was not uh, uh, wrong at all it was that i was going sub threshold or near threshold and then uh, that led to cramping also i had enough wow. amount of drinking uh, electrolytes and energy gels and everything was going according to the nutrition plan but mm. i started cramping mainly because i was pushing uh my mm-hmm. heart rate uh, beyond a point but still my wattage was too low and my speed was also not so good i mean if my power meter was wrong but still the speed was something indicating that it was too low i was going 34 34 35 35 was too low for me and uh, at times i was like 31 32 and then uh, and then i started feeling okay so something is going wrong anyway mm-hmm. it's not yeah uh, a good day so i, I decided that uh, maybe maybe i should Uh, uh take it easy and then go to the hotel room so what i did was i just tra- cycled straight to the room uh oh. put my cycle in the room and then went to the venue anyway because seven others of my triathletes yeah. who, who were doing their some of them were doing their first time yeah. uh, triathlon and uh, two three of them repeating uh, their uh, uh, 70.3 mm-hmm. so it was nice for them for for me to uh, go uh, i wanted to see them running uh, on mm-hmm. the uh, track it was very nice to see them and uh, all of them finished well mm-hmm. uh, all based on uh, targets that we uh, that we set uh, which were not achieved anyway because it was so mm-hmm. hot it was not possible i mean targets targets cannot uh, be set on that kind of a day yeah, yes I mean, 40, 41 or something was the temperature at some point in time no they 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 sh- should have uh, you know some some people were saying they should have reduced the distance and all that but anyway uh, yeah. most of them Uh, uh all my athletes did well i was very happy i was uh, yeah. there uh, uh, there by, by the time it was 4 hours from the start time i put my cycle in the room and then i went uh, by 4:30 4 and a half hours from the start time i was already there at the transition and then i was cheering for my uh, other athletes so i was happy mm-hmm. anyway i was yeah. not uh, uh, regretting that uh, dnf decision yeah. Yeah. Uh, i think um, there are times when you should decide when when to fight and when to uh, stop fight you yeah, have to choose your battles wisely yeah and otherwise it's uh, no point training uh, yeah. uh, you should, if you are uh, if you are coaching others you should definitely know because sure. i had a, i had a fracture in in texas uh, ironman texas 2019 i had a fracture 3 weeks before the race on my left shoulder i swam one arm I, i know i can swim one arm uh, 3.8 mm-hmm. kilometers i swam entirely using my right arm so oh. I, i did not have to prove to anyone because uh, i know what i'm capable of on that day i would have run uh, 145 uh, uh, like a slow runner i mean five pace is very slow for me so <laughs> I, i what i decided was i wanted 430 to 5 it was not possible at that after that kind of cycling tech mm. so i decided there is no point in, uh, for me to continue because what i went for was not achieved so i was uh, mm. finding it uh, ridiculous beyond that for me to continue Mm-hmm. but uh, but it is not you can also see it in another angle, angle saying that okay the weather is bad uh, why don't you just finish yeah i mean you, there are two perspectives if you want to uh, sure. keep your target and achieve it or maybe uh, take it easy just enjoy the race yeah both are fine i mean i'm not saying this is wrong this is right yeah, yeah, yeah. i just decided what is good for me i stopped Absolutely. so yeah if you feel bad one day and you still want to finish it Uh, mm. uh but do it healthily i mean uh, you're not going to uh, uh, call uh, bonk and then uh, uh, call an ambulance so yeah choose uh, uh, the decision and then take a decision yeah uh, any anything is fine correct correct i think uh, a great learning out of this story what you have just explained is that uh, our body is such a beautiful mechanism
yeah now i'm able to hear you okay yeah uh, sorry for that uh, glitch uh, i was just saying that our body is such a beautiful machine that it gives you it has all kinds of sensors it will always give you signals that something yeah. is something bad or something good is going to happen and yeah. uh, we just feel or whatever we may call it it will give you such be- uh, signals and sensors it is with experience that you learn to read these signals it is with experience yeah. and that repetition that magic of repetition that you start to learn because i've been here this is a threshold this is this this is that data i've been through this journey over and over again you start to recognize the indicators yeah. that your body is uh, yeah, you should also be aware the- you should also be aware of these numbers i mean uh, if you yeah. have been in different types of uh, environment different types of different types of zones uh, different types of efforts uh, hills heat uh, if you have done mm, many types of sessions then you would know uh, so, and now on that day i knew that something was not going right according to the plan so yeah, yeah that's think, uh, the, and that's a sensible and an intelligent to thing to do because most often what i've seen in lot of marathons and even triathlons is people end up thinking that this is be all end all that if i don't finish yeah, it today it yeah. will be really bad for my ego what will people Correct. think what Correct. will i post egoistic, egoistic yeah. decision yeah, yeah. and ego that down, ego yeah. just takes over which kind of then that ability to recognize the sensors or signals from body kind of just diminishes yeah. and then you know you're just doing it for others and not for yourself not for yourself yeah. yeah and so it's so important that you know you should enjoy the process and do it for yourself and set, set it for yourself another thing which happens which is not really discussed so much freely or owned is the failures everyone wants to show that they are iron man or he man or some kind of superman yeah, yeah. that every yeah. race i will go i will just do pbs i will just yeah. whatever when i show up i will only do pbs and that's such a wrong precedence to set especially yeah. because of social media and all i think so this is something very important and if anyone is listening right now it's important to recognize that do not have to go out and race everything for pb do it for Correct. experiences do it for the food do it for the people and sometimes yeah. just show up you, right you get a lot of other experiences out of all these things so it is uh, definitely um you choose uh, uh, based on what you want and not based on social media uh, appearance yeah absolutely that i've seen a lot yeah social media appearance is something uh, yeah. that's been that's been going on in the last 4 years i think for five years <laughs> that's true that's true but yeah. i want to ask this question the next question is while we have talked about perils of social media somewhere probably it's good as well for our sport that we are trying to promote because at least more and more people are getting uh, you know exposed to that kind of if someone in my society or my company or my city can do it let me also try and do it yeah. how yeah. do you foresee the effects of social media in a positive light and the growth of triathlon in india what is what is your opinion like where do you see it in 2025 2020 30 2030 how is, how are you seeing this sport grow in india because it's very new it's probably day zero right now uh i think day zero was uh, uh, when i started it was like uh, i i was the ninth uh, person from india to finish iron man uh, this was 2016 no 2014 Uh, okay. that was my first time in uh, 2014 malaysia mm-hmm. and then uh, from then uh, i've seen a lot of uh, uh, growth i mean i was the ninth time but now i don't think there is uh, i don't think there is any proper number i mean i think there yeah. are more, more than 500 people maybe more than 1000 people maybe, I yeah, yeah. Yeah, maybe i don't know because there is we lost count yeah. uh, there are a lot of people now doing uh, iron man and 70.3 there is no count uh, yeah, definitely yeah. more than 2000 3000 4000 5000 maybe uh, uh, maybe 10 20 000 also because in the last iron man goa itself had uh, 15 1500 uh, registration 1500 1, no, uh, so. i think iron man goa had 700 uh, uh, 70.3 finishers because uh, there was really also on the registration so yeah, there is not yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. i think uh, just from goa alone 700 and two times goa so i think more than 1000 people finish Yeah, yeah, just in Goa. Outside of India, there are a lot of others traveling, true, uh, true. going for uh, different countries and uh, yeah. doing Ironman, Ironman 40.3. So there are a lot of uh, there is a lot of growth, and yeah. uh, the business uh, is what I would see. I mean, there were uh, so there was a time when I purchased my first triathlon bike mm-hmm. in 2015. I was the first to purchase a triathlon bike in Chennai. 
<laughs> so in 2015 when i got a triathlon bike i was riding on my aero bars and the handlebar is very different uh even for me it was totally new i i, I mean i even i would uh, look at my cycle every now and then like it's a it's a strange thing uh so think about the outsiders people around yeah. me and uh, even cyclists you know they were like okay this is a new bike it's so nice to see and all that mm. so uh, at that time the reason behind that was the availability was very low and then mm. all the indians you know we complain Uh, saying uh, we don't have enough facility we don't have enough uh, swimming pools to swim regularly we don't have mm. uh, running tracks we don't have uh, proper cycling security mm. while cycling or safety while dry, mm. riding all these complaints we come up with but now i think the business has uh, really gone up uh, in terms of mm. cycling and running there is a lot of shoe brands uh, mm. new so, i mean earlier there was uh, there were two brands like nike and adidas and then mm. reebok was doing some uh, kind of uh, shoes now there is like sockney brooks uh, yeah. new balance you get hoka you get every every shoe brand that you name and they have already in india most probably available in yeah. uh, in india and uh, there are a lot of cycle brands uh, i've mm. not even heard of those names 3 uh, years back and now you see them in in your uh, local store and there is a i, I don't know Which i cannot count the number of triathlon bikes and tt bikes that are in chennai uh throughout india it should be a huge number and uh, yeah. even the first time triathlete is buying a triathlon bike uh, i mean they would have uh, never tried a triathlon before but directly they purchase a triathlon bike it's okay it's good i mean yeah. i'm not complaining i'm saying okay something people are trying new things yeah. now that's nice. yeah. uh, so i think uh, uh, we are not in day zero I, uh, five years back i would have said yeah day zero was like that mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. now it is uh, it is uh, it has gone up really well and uh, mm. definitely see, in chennai there are like four cycle stores uh, who are mm. all selling triathlon bikes and there are people purchasing from all three four stores mm. now they are all uh, um, uh, looking for uh, better options and even mm. uh, clear options they are asking for 10 lakh rupee cycles 1 million rupee cycle cycle is something that we have never we have never dreamt i never dreamt of 5 years back i have never thought about it i mean i i yeah. thought okay those are things for elite people now even my cycle is that expensive i mean so uh, the growth that we have seen definitely huge uh, yeah. and uh, it is going to just improve because right now i'm after this meeting i'm going for a, sh- a cycle store opening in chennai so oh. they are also bringing uh, orbea felt and baso and uh, f- uh, felt triathlon bikes so there are a lot of options coming in people are yeah. definitely buying stuff and uh, they want to try as soon as you buy a cycle you know for that expense i don't think you want to quit immediately so you want to keep trying yeah, yeah so we so do a couple of things we, we call it investment now than a purchase <laughs> yeah, you know, people that's a way of marketing yeah yeah i think uh, we are definitely heading in 5 years uh, maybe 20 25 to 2030 then we mm. see uh, uh, a lot of uh, ironman you know, more than two uh, uh, more than two ironman 70.3 courses like proper ironman 70.3 courses yeah. within india within india more yes. than, more than um, uh, you know we were talking about runners 20000 runners mm. in chennai marathon uh, i'm i'm telling you that there are going to be like um 5000 triathletes in chennai probably there yeah, is the possibility that we are heading towards that and if it is just chennai and then we we are have we are having so many cities in mm. Ch- in india now mm. so so a lot of people are going to uh, come into the sport because it's it's an enticing sport definitely mm. triathlon is something very interesting it's True. not uh, it's not uh, for everyone because it's not so easy but mm. at the same time it's for everyone you can you can try any day and then uh, uh, so so when you finish uh, you get a lot of bragging rights that's what they mm-hmm. they say that right bragging rights and then when when you know that it is so difficult and then when you know that your friend is doing and then when you want to try it and then yeah. you finish it somehow then you start encouraging others to do mm-hmm. so this is a process going on for the last few years and yeah. that has seen a lot of numbers now um yeah I mean, I uh, so uh, i think pandemic was a kind of a while it was negative for through and through the world but it it just def- definitely gave a fillip to the entire fitness industry people started uh, investing more and at least talking about health and fitness and just enrolling themselves in at least some kind of online class or yoga classes or some kind of 
gym or you know people who were slightly serious and had some resources could come into marathons and triathlons so for sure i think the fitness industry is uh, on the rise and as disposable incomes rise in the country there is certainly some people who have reached that self actualization stage would want to do something higher purpose also right in life yeah, yeah i think bigger that. car bigger house bigger but this is something that you cannot purchase for this you have to work hard and everyone knows that this is the only thing that you can't purchase you can't purchase the iron man tag for yourself yeah, right yeah also people are uh, looking into fitness i mean i want to get fit i want to get fit every day they look into a mirror and then they see a lot of social media uh, mm. posts and everything they really get inspired uh, they start and then they d- uh, dip immediately in a day or two but then it's a start i mean they start yeah. and then they somehow they at least uh, out of 10 people one of them would uh, end up doing yeah. a triathlon so there is a huge opportunity going on yeah yeah all right yeah. so rahul we are reaching towards the end of our conversation uh, and uh, before i ask you the last question one question that also comes to my mind is uh, what message would you like to give to newbie triathletes who are trying to you know uh, enroll for races how should they choose the kind of race that they should be doing and uh, what are some of the broad areas that they should be working on while of course coaching it starts with coaching and having a good coach is definitely one should be step one but what are your thoughts on it uh yeah so uh, finding a, a structured plan and consistency uh, this is going to be something basic uh, and uh, even without my saying it is understa- understood so uh, there is no point in talking about it uh but what i would say is uh, there are people who uh just register based on the course that they are going to i mean let's say uh, there is a uh, ironman copenhagen uh, that is coming up right so copenhagen is uh, in the month of august uh, i think yeah. yeah so one day before Kal- after kalmar yeah yeah one something like that uh, yeah so couple that, of that, races are back to back saturday is sweden and sunday is uh, open yeah. generally so so what happens is uh, i see that denmark is a good race i want to go there i see that barcelona is a good place i want to go there uh, for the race so this is not how you choose a race uh, you choose a race based on your uh, first uh, thing is based on your training mm. so if you have 6 uh, months from now can you train for that race in 6 months that is mm. the first thing you see. and then mm. the second thing you see is the terrain that you are going to face there so mm. for example there is ironman 70.3 in rwanda mm. that rwanda course is around 1430 meter total elevation gain wow. in a 90 km cycle so 90 km 1430 elevation after swimming 1.9 km uh, it's not going to be easy it's a mountainous race it's a mountainous race they call yeah. it it's, uh, it's one of and it's the toughest 70.3 in terms of elevation gain mm. and even mm. on the run there is going to be 280 or 300 meter gain Mm. so it's not a joke to so if you think okay i'm going to see silverback gorillas after the race you will only see the silverback gorillas while during the race <laughs> during the race or after the race you will see the gorillas but not finish the race because you would not train for a hilly race you yeah, not prepare yeah. for it so you should know what kind of terrain that mm. is going to be there and then the the second or third thing both are equally important one is the terrain that you're going to face and the second mm. thing is you should also see which month it is falling on the race mm-hmm. i mean uh, the last two three months before the race would be your vital training i mm-hmm. mean if you are in chennai if you choose a race in june or july mm-hmm. the the heat and humidity is so high here yeah. i mean starting from march mid march to uh, end of june july you you want to be mm-hmm. on a high volume but mm. you you are supposed to be on a high volume because your race is falling in the month of june or july mm. but you can't do it because of the heat and humidity humidity will be uh, you run 10 km 1 hour easy run 10 km whatever mm. you will be soaking wet yeah. forget running forget running longer distance forget uh, cycling longer distance because mm. last uh, week i cycled uh, 105 km 110 km which is quite normal for me i do 120 to 140 every saturday Mm. but i i drank around 5 liters that entire day yeah. still i was feeling dehydrated still dehydrated. feeling dehydrated it was not only just water i was having electrolytes i had tender right. i had all kind of drinks and mm. still not good so if i choose a race in june july then i know that i cannot train as much volume as i would want it to be yeah that's so, true so for me i train 20 hours weekly so i keep it to 15 16 hours during the summer 
Yeah. But yeah. for you, if you are a if you are a full time office employee, then you would probably be training twelve hours weekly. That would be a high volume for you. Yeah. And if you are not able to meet that due to weather, and then you come down to eight hours, nine hours, then your race will be very bad. Yeah, that's true. So if you are in Bombay or in uh, in uh, in a rainy area where there are going to be four terrible months of raining. Yeah. then you don't choose your race during the rainy season or just after the rainy season after because you would not have any kind of uh, uh, outdoor any kind of outdoors uh, you would always be sticking to indoors your swimming pools might be closing uh, closed due, due to thunderstorms or whatever mm. so there is a huge possibility that your training is down volume down, down and you that, wouldn't have a good race so this is one major thing that people are forgetting yeah that's true that's true yeah. and hence and i think it, having a good coach who is experienced also is important there are yeah. sorry to say but there are so many people out there uh, who who have not done their own full ironman and yet uh, you know training coaching for, people training people for yeah, full ironman yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, just so, because they are running coaches they just add it as a line of business exactly. in the so you know, even the, even the this point to add to this point i think um i think experience comes from different trying different things so i have had a wide variety of races that i have been to mm-hmm. like i have tried a 2200 meter uh, elevation in switzerland uh, switzerland which is one of the toughest climbs uh, in the ironman distance and i have done uh, flat course like texas i mm-hmm. have done uh, i have done 30 hours of training weekly uh, wow. for four five weeks consecutively 28 hours of training in muti uh, in a hilly terrain so you know the variety of experience that i gained is where i i uh, come up with uh, yeah. uh, new ideas in terms of training and all that so that is also missing in many uh, yeah. new coaches no new coaches yeah. that's true new that's coaches true. i would say i think coaching is going on for a long time now i, I mean the yeah. last 3 4 years there are a uh, huge number of coaches coming up and then they are saying uh, they want to coach you uh, without any experience their uh, training volume would be 9 hours 10 hours weekly yeah and uh, yeah they have absolutely no idea on what is going on with your body if you are training well or weekly just because their training is just 9 hours so True. i've seen that i've seen that several times so yeah. that is uh, uh, one thing so the main three points that you would see for the for choosing a race is if it is if it is uh, you can train within that 6 months or 3 months mm. to the race and then the last 3 months will you be able to train in yeah. those three months towards the race and um, are you uh, choosing the right terrain it's like a flat course or a hilly yeah. course or a hot course cold course the cold course is not easy huh? if you think yeah. you're going to run well in a cold course no it's not going to be no, easy you are easy. you don't even know you are dehydrating you are actually dehydrating yeah the, you are going to get cold cramps cold there are cramps. different kinds of uh, different kinds of difficulties the water is not going to be uh, uh, easy to swim to yeah. even the wetsuit will not help you so yeah. there are many difficulties in cold courses and then and then we have uh, another uh, main thing is uh, uh, the budget uh, if you want to choose i mean that is the last point i would say yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, if you want to choose a race uh, make it closer uh, make it easier if it is going to be heavy on budget then you i have seen people uh, mm-hmm. buying indo trainer buying a triathlon cycle buy everything whatever they see and then they decide a race also uh, australia or far away from uh, india and then yeah. they end up paying everything uh spending a hell a lot of money and then finally what they find out is they have uh, uh, they have lost a lot of money in triathlon alone they they start selling all those things that they purchase and they yeah. disappear from triathlon i have seen that uh-huh. i have seen that one of my athletes he started purchasing everything i said slow down and he was like no no i can do this i can do that uh, i want to do this i want to do australia race and he went actually he did it and then he came back and then he started feeling like okay he has lost a lot on budget his business was slightly down during that year hmm. so he started selling everything i mean oh. he disappeared from triathlon this is one uh, so the budget is not to be ignored even if you are a yeah. person still think about it absolutely so that absolutely. is the fourth point i would say yeah these are the yeah. main four points understood oh, all right so one last thing before uh, i let you go uh, if there is a billboard or a social media post that can be seen by billions of people what message would you like to give to the world if it could be seen by billions it's about triathlon it could be anything it could be your life's mantra it could be motivation any message one message that will last people long before you are gone ah okay long before i am gone okay anything? i have never <laughs> i have never thought about something like this uh, uh okay so i always uh, say this 
uh in triathlon i mean i'm going to be sticking to triathlon i'm not going to go get out of the topic um for me triathlon if you did not run in a triathlon then you do, you're not a triathlete <laughs> okay if okay you, if you did not run in a triathlon you are not a triathlete yet I, I, okay. whether you finished a full ironman you crawled uh, you are you're going to say no no triathlon is somewhere uh, i have heard people saying no no you can walk you can crawl but you still finishing is important no it is not <laughs> Running, cycling, running is important. The reason yeah. why they say walk or crawl and still finish is because you train really well. Something went mm. wrong on the race day because everything cannot go according to plan. I had a DNF. Yeah. That's yeah. Not, yeah. not bad. When you are in such a state, I had a fracture. I I did not run in that race. I mean, I almost bonked at 16 kilometer mark on the run. So mm. I still walked and finished that day. So mm. I did not run, but I I have run well. Most of my triathlons I run. so mm. what i'm trying to say is it is not that you don't attempt but mm. then you don't train for walking yeah 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 if you so, go for your first triathlon you did not run because you did not train well then that's bad that's bad. yeah you did not you did not choose the right distance yeah. you went for a 9 man instead of your 70.3 or you went for a 70.3 instead of an olympic distance so yeah. if you did not run you are not a triathlete yet So for okay, me, okay. I think that's the main okay. uh, comment I would pass. Uh, if if I, I meant to sort of draw parallels from what you just said, uh, for the quote is, uh, uh, you should train for the goal that you're setting and try right. to see it end right. to end, through and through, yeah. and not just see. wing it and just do half baked efforts. Yeah, yeah. So you you will uh, have adversities. I yeah. mean, you train really hard. You are ready for a nine hour Ironman. okay mm-hmm. you are so fast but you had a very uh, bad accident on your cycling yeah yeah true uh, at the uh, or let's say while dismounting at the 180 km mark you fell down and you are, yeah. you, are, you have broken one of your bones and still you finished by walking then that is admirable yeah because yeah. They, that doesn't make you a bad triathlete okay yeah. what i'm trying to say is every race there are people who walk every yeah. race they walk and finish and then they call themselves triathlete that is not sure. that is not something that i will ever accept you sure. are a triathlete only when you run that's yeah. that's yeah. simple yeah. Uh, absolutely that is, that's why we at tri fantry we have a motto called train endure conquer you can only conquer yeah. if you have endured and you have trained well so thank you yeah. so much ragul for taking out the time and sharing your yeah. wisdom of so many years uh, hopefully this adds value to at least a few bunch of people who can Uh, get motivated and train in the right progressive manner under a rightful guidance of coach and right uh, ways to going about their triathlon yeah. journey and life in general thank you again thank uh, let's you, continue to train and do conquer sure man thank you thank you thank you everyone thank you. if you're watching to the very end i will attach uh, ragul's instagram id in the description please go and follow him you can always dm him reach out for coaching he's my coach as well uh, so Hundred percent recommendation over there. Uh, hope to see you in the next episode. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye.